So let's go to, um, so we're talking about the candidates in the 2020 race that we believe that we're going to see an all-woman lineup. Uh, we thought that Kirsten Gillibrand would be one of the three women that would be in there, but she is currently at 0.3%. This is after showing up on the Fox Town debate, which has been very in instrumental and helpful to people like uh, Pete, uh, Pete Buttigieg, the mayor, and also to uh, some of the other candidates. So she was hoping for a boost out of that. She didn't get it. De Blasio, Bill de Blasio, the mayor of New York, who's looking to try and get onto a Fox News town hall to help boost his numbers to get him over 1%, he's actually beating her at 0.5%, which is really sad. We're talking about uh, there are right now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 10 of the Democrats who aren't even at 1%. This is kind of embarrassing for these guys. I mean, really, you're talking about Andrew Yang, Julius uh, Castro, Gabbard, uh, Inslee, Mike Inslee. There's just so many of these people. So we're um, so it's just amazing to me, and it, it, it's astounding to see so many who are just completely out of their out of anyone's attention. They're just not in anyone's uh, scope. And yet they're in this race and they think they're going somewhere. And one of the biggest things that I think we should really mention about that is that of these candidates, and I thought Kirsten Gillibrand would be it, and she should just, I don't even know why she's going to go to the debate on June 26th or to June 27th at 0.3% national approval after four, five, six months in the race. She might as well say goodbye. There's nothing that she can do. She can't win this. It would take a miracle. And even if she were, she owes Cory Booker a favor. Politically, she owes him a lot. Um, so that he did her a big favor to try and keep her alive, to get her the subscribers she needs, the, the uh, supporters that she needs to be able to make it onto the stage to, to even try and become presidential or to get further in the race. Uh, so even if she does succeed, Cory Booker is the one who's going to win. So we're going to see some very interesting things. But all of that was said to actually bring us to, plus minus some interruption, sorry. Uh, but that was to bring us to talk about Joe Biden. I have a problem with Joe Biden. That man is, I don't know if anyone noticed this. Because when I was looking for it, no one saw this. I mean, I haven't heard anyone talking about this whatsoever. And it was uh, an article that was on... March 27th of 2019, and this is from the Washington Examiner, and Joe Biden says, and the title of the article is, Joe Biden says he was like the token black when he first ran for Senate. Now, it's not the first time that Joe Biden has ever made an insensitive statement about something where he thinks he's being kind, and he's as bad at this as, say, Harry Reid. Harry Reid, who we know was famous for his, you know, Obama, President, Senator Obama, he's really clean, he's fresh. Like, what was he supposed to be? I, I don't understand. It, it, it's just insulting. But we're seeing that Joe Biden is saying that he was treated like a token black person. First of all, how he would ever know what a token black person is, uh, since he's never been black, I don't think he, he would have any idea. But his reasoning is that because he was young in politics, they treated him like he was an outsider, like he was a black guy. Wait a minute, you're in the Democratic Party. Isn't that the party that loves black people? Aren't they supposed to be inclusive? Aren't they supposed to be paying attention? Aren't they there for civil rights? Wouldn't it be great? There are no token blacks in the Democratic Party, right? Right? I mean, you tell me. So what's he really saying about the Democratic Party and the roots and core of the Democratic Party? That even though they put on this wonderful face and they go out and they get votes and say, hey, we're, we're here for minorities, he's saying that you know, behind the scenes, if they want to actually do anything in the Democratic Party, they get isolated, thrown to the side. They're not paid attention to. I mean, it's a bit troubling. But the thing that really gets me about in that article 
And if you were to read through the article, one of the most important things I think that's said there is, oh, where is it? And I want to show it to you here, is that he decides he wants, ah, oh, there it is. Biden said that he tried to prostitute himself for the money, but was die, denied by the big guys because of his youth. Though he believed his age was ultimately what led to his victory. Now, this is the interesting thing. Joe Biden is talking about his early career in politics. He's talking about when he was making his first run and trying to get interest. And everyone knows you need to have people's interest to build them up, to let them move you forward uh, in politics. You need people who are going to make donations, that are going to go out and put up signs, that are going to help you get petitions signed. I mean, it's a whole process. It's not as simple as, hey, I want to run, and everyone says yes. There's a whole thing that goes on. You have to build up a support network. Okay. And he's saying that to get that support network, to get the money that's necessary to fund that support network, to buy the flyers, to buy the uh, yard signs, to get the commercials on TV, he was willing to prostitute himself. You know what's really scary about that? What he's saying is he was willing to do what it took. He was willing to do whatever it would take to get the money from big money groups. He was willing to take their money and sell his soul for politics. Now, you may think, well, that article isn't very informative. It's not saying a whole lot there, Mike. You may have misunderstood that. You know, that's just a quote. It's out of context. And I would say, you know what? You could be right. So let's listen to him in context and see what he has to say for himself. This is a video of um, from the Washington Free Beacon, which was published on March 27th of 2019, going back into the past of Joe Biden speaking directly himself. Senator, I'm sure that, that you would agree that, that your service in the Senate up to this point has, has not reflected any particular concern for the larger contributors. Well, the fortunate thing is I didn't have many larger contributors, and the only reason, see, I went to the big guys for the money. I was ready to prostitute myself in the, man, the manner in which I talk about it, but what happened was they said, come back when you're 40, son, and so I had to go out. <laughs> well, I had to go to a number of small contributors. Well, I, I, I think we're all grateful, son, you didn't take no for an answer. <laughs> Well, I don't know if we all were uh, happy about that. Sorry about it. So, that's the thing that gets me. In his own words, he went out. And they said no. And that's his, saving, that's his big thing. Well, they, they said no. They said I couldn't prostitute myself for those candidates. I couldn't sell myself and sell my position. So you ask yourself, well, Mike, that's a great thing. That means he's a good candidate. He's doing well. Why are you worried about that? Why he's leading the Democratic Party even though he's an old, white male who's rich? And he said that he didn't sell himself out. Okay, you may say that. So let me ask you another question then. When you take a look, and this is according to uh, Money.com, uh, they recently did an analysis, and according to OpenSecrets.org, as they quote, um, Biden's net worth was a negative... $947, uh, excuse me, $947,987 negative in 2014 when he was vice president and he was getting paid uh, $230,000 a year after being a senator for decades. He was losing nearly a million dollars, nearly a million dollars. And yet, Recently, he's now estimated to be worth $900,000. So, let me ask you something. If you went into debt tomorrow, and you were $100,000 in debt, if you were $50,000, if you were $10,000 in debt, actually, the average American is $10,000 in debt. Okay, so you had an extra $10,000 added on top of that. All right? You had negative nine, negative nine hundred thousand. That's negative million dollars in debt. That means you're losing your house. That you can't get a credit card. 
you you're getting paid two hundred and thirty thousand. Literally, that means he is losing one point one million dollars because he has two hundred and thirty thousand dollars that he's getting, which is an asset that he's getting for being vice president. He was living in government paid for taxpayer paid for housing. He didn't pay for food. He didn't pay for transportation. He wasn't paying for anything. In 2014, Joe Biden was living on the taxpayer dime and he lost $900,000. Does that make sense to anyone? Where did that money go? And more importantly, since he got out of being president, 2016 was the re-election year. 2017, he has no job. Joe Biden is not a member of the Senate. He's not elected anywhere. Joe Biden has nothing. And Joe Biden suddenly created a million dollars. Actually, so he had to get a million dollars to bring him to zero and another million. So $2 million. Somehow, in the space of roughly two years, Joe Biden gained $2 million dollars doing nothing. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't do anything. He made $2 million after getting out of the government. And he's already admitted he was willing to give, to prostitute himself. And people are saying, well, that's not something to worry about. I think that's something very much to worry about. I think that's a very big concern. That he is willing to do whatever it politically takes to win the nomination. And he's leading. And he's leading by large numbers. He has a lot of donors, a lot of big money donors. The kind of people that he first went to in the 1970s to give him money. People who have been backing him for decades as he was a state senator. People who backed him as the vice president who are now backing him in his bid to become president. The very same people he went to the first time are the very same people that are now with him. Why are we to believe that if they at first said, you know, you got to give us something for it. It's a give and take. We're going to own your soul. We're going to own you politically. Do you think those people who had that moral perspective about politics change their minds just because Joe Biden's a good guy? A good guy who doesn't know how to speak about who thinks that every Indian in America is from the 7-Eleven, that they work at the 7-Eleven, or they drive a taxi? Who thinks that his difficulty in becoming a senator was the same as the plight of the 1970s for anyone who's black? Just off the heels of civil rights, of the civil rights movement. I don't think that's the same thing. I don't think he has the very same perspective that most people have. I understand he's old, even older than me, and I'm old. Uh, he's older and he has a very strange perspective on things. I don't think he has the perspective that makes sense. But with that said, we need to take a break because I do want to get uh, everything set, get Shannon onto the program. I apologize. I know it was a little bit chaotic there for a second with the technology but we're going to be right back with you and we'll have her on and we'll have the interview and i think it's going to be really exciting i really love it when we have her on she's so energetic 